Let's go over inverse normal. Like the sleep in math class. <laughs> it's kind of back in time. I'm trying to remind you here what we've done with normal distributions. So another video I showed you about this and normal distributions, if we know, so this is if something is, again, normal, which means it looks like something like this, like a normal distribution like this, where this right here is the mean, this right here then might be the standard deviations, this is a mean plus sigma, this is a mean minus sigma, something like this. In this case, if we know the minimum and the maximum and the mean and the standard deviation, remember this is the area under the curve was the key here. Um, well, if we know those things, then we can actually use this function called normal CDF. So normal, whoops, uh, normal CDF, this was the function on our calculator. And again, we gave it the min, the maximum, the mean, the standard deviation, and it gets us a probability. This was the key to doing this, okay? So this is what we've been doing before. So if you tell it basically where to start, where to stop, it'll tell you the area under the curve. Super. But what if we're given a probability? What if we start here and we're looking for something else? For example, we're looking for an X value. We're looking for some sort of maximum. This is what we do for inverse normal. Okay, so you tell your calculator the area under the curve. So this is a case where you actually know the area under the curve. So let's say it's like this right here, and we know the mean, and we know the standard deviation. Okay, so we know this, and we know this. Okay, so we know that the mean plus sigma, we know mean minus sigma. Okay, so if you know both of these, so you know the mean, you know the standard deviation, um, what will happen is this, you can ask your calculator for something called inverse norm. What that will tell you, so let's just say I start off with like, I don't know, I start off with here, and I knew that it was like this right here. So let's say I'm given this right here, okay, and I know that this area here, so let's say this value here, this is some x value, which I don't know, I'm trying to find x here. Let's say, and I know this area. So you know the area, so let's say you're told this, you know this area from here to the left. Then you can ask your calculator for something called inverse norm. So that's what this is called here. I'll write it down. I'll write it maybe in blue here. I'll say this is called inverse normal or inverse norm. And what do you have to give it? You have to give it the area. You give it the mean and the standard deviation. And what does it give you? Well, keep in mind, you already know the probability. That's the area. So it gives you the x value. So it's like working backwards, where before we knew the x values were to start and stop. It told us the area under the curve. Now we tell it the area, and it tells us the x value. That sounds uh, fine and dandy, but here's the problem. Does it tell us the max or the minimum? I could not stress this enough. This is the most important thing right here, okay? Pro tip, really important one. Inverse norm only tells you about areas to the left. This is how inverse normal works. I could not stress this possibly enough. So when you're doing something like this right here, and you're looking for this right here, and this is your areas to the left, that's what it does, okay? So it's only to the left. If you want something to the right, you're gonna have to think carefully about what to feed your calculator. Your calculator only does things to the left. Uh, let me explain a little bit more about it. How do you do it on your calculator? But I like this from The Simpsons. <laughs> Are there any questions like, can you repeat the part of the stuff where you said about all the things? This is maybe how you feel about inverse norm. But on the TI Inspire, you can get to it by calculate, uh, sorry, calculator, menu, probability, distributions, and then choose inverse normal. TI 84, you go distributions, and you go scroll down to inverse norm. But don't forget, again, I'm just trying to stress this. This is so important. You do this inverse normal, but only for areas to the left. Okay, so that means if you're given some sort of function like this right here, okay, it's only to the left that it's doing it for. It'll tell you x. It'll tell you this x value here. Okay? Now I've got an example where purposefully I made it to where it's not to the left, just so you can see how to do it. So here's an example. We have the height of the students at school, and we're going to assume that those are normally distributed. Oh, right away, before doing anything else then, I'm going to just draw myself a sketch. Whoops, like this. I'm going to draw myself a normal curve, like this. Where is the mean? The mean is... 171. Okay, good. And the standard deviation is 7. So that means this one here is at, uh, let's see, 171 plus 7 is 178. 
and this one right here, 171 uh, minus 7. What's that? That's going to be 164. There we go. This is sort of my mean standard deviations. Here we go. Now here's what we're told now. So this, I've just drawn this. We know that 10% of the students have a height greater than x. So find x. This is the, the whole idea. Is, I don't know where this is. We have to guess here. So we know that this right here, for example, I'm just guessing where it is. I don't know. Somewhere over here. I don't know where we're going to find it here. We know this area right here is 0 0.1 because that's 10%. So we know that this area to the right is this. But remember, inverse normal is only, oops, I didn't write a very good uh, here, inverse normal only for area to the left. Is this an area to the left that I know? Nope, I cannot give my calculator this. Or else what it'll do is it'll give me the x value for which the area below it is 10%. Now if you used symmetry, you could actually figure that out. But let's make it a little bit um, more clear here. So what I'm going to do then is I'm going to use this and say, well, I know that this right here area is 0.1, but that means then that this area to the left then must then be, like what's this area then? that area then must be 0 0.9. Does that make sense? 0 0.9 is to the left of this x value. So that's why I'm going to say inverse normal. Okay, I'm going to do inverse normal. And I'm going to give it the area. So I'm going to say it's at 0 0.9. I'm going to tell it, of course, the mean is uh, 171 and the standard deviation is 7. So I'm going to go like this. Okay, and I'll just make sure I label what everything is. So this right here is the area. That was the key part here, okay? This was not trivial. This here is the mean. This here is the standard deviation. And let's see what my calculator tells me. So it is that easy once you figure out what to do. The key is to know what to do here. So if we do this, we open up our trusted calculator and say, hey, I want a calculator. I go to menu and I say probability distributions and I say inverse normal. What's the area? I'm going to say 0.9. What's the mean? I'm going to say, what was it again? 171, was it? Is that what it was? Yeah. 171. Standard deviation is 7. Go. It will tell me the x value. So this is, uh, well, this three significant figures, this will round up. It'll be 180. So it'll be approximately 180 centimeters. This will be the answer. And hopefully it'll make sense. You can you can usually take a look at what you're doing and see if it makes any sense from the drawing. Because if you accidentally did it wrong, if you just gave it 0.1, like watch, let me just show you. If you had forgotten to do that, all right, you would do this right here, but you'd say the area was 0.1 instead. I'll just change this here to 0.1. Look what it tells you. It tells you it's 162.02. So this is 162. You'd say, yeah, yeah, that's great. That's over here. But that can't be over here because more than half of the curve is to the right. So that's how you could have figured out, oh, I've made a mistake. But good news if you figure out, hey, what's 171 minus that? And then you can do 171 then plus that same amount you'd get there. Watch if I go. So if you were smart enough to figure out, hey, wait a second. I think I've done the wrong thing. This is only, this is on that end. If I do 171 minus this answer, I could have done that. And I go, great. And then I say, all right, what's 171 plus that same answer then? Because I'm going to use symmetry and go to the right. Do you notice it gives me 179.97, which is what I got before. So see, you, you could have actually done it if you just knew what you're doing. Just keep it in mind. But I think it's a safe idea is to just always use the fact that inverse normal only uses areas to the left. Which means if you're given an area to the right, then you have to think about what's the area to the left. So if this was 0.1, that became 0.9, and so on. If this was like, a, I don't know, 0.5, uh, sorry, 0 0.6, then this would be 0.4. I'd have to put into there. Now, if we're given an area that's to the left, it would be no problem. We can just put in the value, okay? It's only the area to the left.